Sally Light, CEO of MND England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Welcome to Australia. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you very much for welcoming me so warmly. It's been a pleasure. So, I thought we'd just have a conversation today about um, your visit. Mm -hmm. You've been here for three days now. Mm -hmm. And just a reflection, I guess, on um, any si significant things that have struck you about MND mm. care and research in Australia. Mm. Well, it's been really fascinating to be here. Um, it's a great opportunity to see how an association works the other side of the world. Mm. Um, I guess the starting point, though, and um, we've discussed this, is that the needs of people with MND and many of the problems actually are exactly the same, whether we're talking about the UK or here in Australia. Um, and I think uh, both organisations are trying to work the best way through that. So uh, as much as we can learn from each other has got to be a really good thing and that's why I'm delighted to be here. Um, overarching uh, things, I think your structure is quite different to ours. So you yeah. have the National Association focused on advocacy and uh, research and, um, and then the state associations uh, deal with care and obviously that's different for us. We're all in in one organisation. Um, but I was interested to reflect on how our new regional structure actually mirrors many of the advantages of your structure. So mm. that closeness to the uh, local government and um, uh, the very uh, devolved ways in which health services are being delivered. That's why we really we have restructured in order to try to make sure that we're very close to that decision making and can influence it. So that's been really fascinating. Mm. Oh good, thank you Sally. So what do you think are the sort of main similarities I guess in MND care in Australia and mm. England? I think we share a common challenge which <laughs> is um, geographical inequality. So we've both got examples of where care is exceptionally good and where we'd like to replicate that quality of care right across the, the, the countries. Um, but like you, we have ge geographical inequalities and that's something that we're trying to grapple with. I guess uh, yours is of a different magnitude when we've talked about some of the distances and the 10 hour drives to, you know, in between places where people with M&D are living. So we don't have those, uh, those remote communities. Um, but I've been very taken by uh, your use of um, telehealth and um, uh, video conferencing to reach people in more remote areas. And I think that's something we should, could do more about. And actually not even if people live in remote areas, but if they get to the stage where they're no longer able to come to clinic. So that was really interesting to hear Matthew Kiernan talk about that. Mm, yes, that certainly is the future and something mm. that we both need to really... Yeah focus on encouraging and developing, I think, isn't definitely. it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What, what about the main sort of um, differences, I guess, in, in, um, in how you approach the support of people with MND? Mm. Um, well, I was really interested in the conversation that we had with uh, MND New South Wales the other mm. day. Mm. Um, the, the transformation, I guess, of the way services are going to be delivered to people under 65 with a disability here mm. um, that's been rolled out, that pilot is very interesting and the idea that the um, New South Wales Association will effectively become a paid provider of care mm. was quite a fascinating one for me and it will be really interesting to see how that plays out over the next few years. It's clearly not without its challenges but also there are some great opportunities in there as well and I'll be really interested to, to watch how that, that grows. Um, there are charities in the UK that are providers, but we aren't. Um, mm -hmm. We aren't one. Um, and obviously it was amazing to see their equipment service as well. That was, um, that was uh, uh, an interesting model and um, I'm sure it makes sure that uh, equipment gets to people with M&D much more rapidly than relying on, on the state system. So yeah, a number of I think a number of I've been struck by the number of similarities, but also inevitably there are differences to do with geography and just the the way that the the um, uh, the country uh, is divided into different states, and therefore you've got to have a model that um, uh, that that makes the best use of the opportunities of those that structure. Yes, I think that's what we've reflected on quite mm. a bit, isn't it? Mm. Also the fact that. Our organisation started at a very similar time, mm, 35 to 40 years ago, but yeah. um, and we've evolved in very similar ways, but also had to adapt to the differences in our in our health systems and disability systems as we've grown yeah. and developed along the way. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. And I th we've also, we've talked quite a bit about fundraising, which is also very similar, a very committed uh, M&D community who are very generous in their 
their fundraising for us and how that supports all of our work. Um, and um, But we've also talked, I think, about how uh, more in the Australian system there is the opportunity for some state funding for organisations, which uh, we don't have uh, really anymore in the UK and certainly the association doesn't have. Mm. So there are there are some differences. I think um, it was very interesting on the first day to visit Matthew Keenan and um, to see the research effort there um, mm. in Sydney. And uh, I was delighted to hear that um, Matthew's uh, very uh, connected to the MD Care and Research Centre in Oxford, um, to Professors Turner uh, and Talbot, and um, shares. Uh, the optimism that I heard from them recently about the stage that res uh, that research is at, and um, mm. uh, I think optimism for the future that we are moving into more of a kind of translational phase of uh, M and D research, which of course is great news. Yeah, I think that was really <coughs> wonderful for us both to, to see mm, that, wasn't it? Was, that it was. um, yeah. both Matthew and the team at Oxford have mm. recently expressed to us their their mm. feelings of hope, and, and I think that came through in our research meetings a few days ago in Brisbane as well, so yeah. we are very hopeful that yeah. things will turn a corner very soon in, in the search for a treatment for MND. Definitely. Definitely. So why do you think it's important for um, associations such as ours to, to get together with other ALS MND associations around the world? Well, I think, I mean, it's such a fantastic opportunity. I feel really privileged to have been here and it's just been, it's been really great and I go away with lots of ideas and uh, even more enthusiasm. I think, um, well, the, the International Alliance just provides us with such a great opportunity to connect, doesn't it? And uh, as we've, you know, we've discussed over the last few days, there are so many things that we have in common, but also so many things that we can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. um, people develop different ways of solving problems and I think um, being able to share some of those ways and even if um, it doesn't provide an exact solution to something that you're grappling with it helps mm -hmm. you think about issues in a different way um, and I think you go away with renewed energy to try to um, you know tackle some of those things to make sure that we continue to uh, fight as hard as we can on behalf of people with MND and um, move services forward so that people get what they need. But, but I mean, I come back, I guess, to where I started, which was that wherever people live, um, certainly in, in um, developed countries, uh, the needs of people with MND are often very, very similar mm. and the problems to be solved very yeah, similar. They are. And through the Alliance, we, we hope that we can outreach to other countries as well and, and, and develop those partnerships and, and um, share experiences and resources as well yeah, with I others so. around the world. Yeah, it's mm. very important. Definitely, those of us that are better resourced have got a responsibility to do that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we like, thank you very much. Thank and you. we've really enjoyed your visit to Australia and hope to see you in Dublin. Yes, excellent. <laughs> really looking forward to Dublin and thank you very much. It's been a wonderful experience. Thanks.